So this patient is a 68-year-old male who presented with a six-week history of painless gross hematuria. He has a past medical history of medically controlled hypertension, hypercholesteremia. He tells us that he has been fatigued recently, has an approximate 10-pound weight loss. He's able to meet his activities of daily living, but he's unable to work due to fatigue. Tells us that he spends more than half the day, however, on his feet and active. Laboratory assessment showed that he had a hemoglobin of 11.4, a calcium of 11.2. His hepatorenal function was normal. He had a normal lipid panel. He underwent imaging, including a CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. This showed a large 8-centimeter renal mass, associated paraaortic lymphadenopathy, and lung metastasis. The patient then underwent a cytoreductive nephrectomy and was found to have a pathologic T4 lesion that was consistent with clear cell renal cell carcinoma. He was then initiated on treatment with ipilimumab and nivolumab for induction of four courses, after which he was found to have a partial response. He subsequently then received six cycles of maintenance nivolumab, followed by progression. The time of progression, he was transitioned to cabozantinib monotherapy at 60 milligrams daily, which he continued for a total of nine months, followed by subsequent progression. This patient is a typical presentation for someone with advanced kidney cancer uh, presenting with poor risk disease. Based on the available scoring systems that we commonly utilize, he has a poor prognosis uh, based on the following risk factors, his performance status, anemia, hypercalcemia, and the timing from diagnosis to need for treatment. Based on the uh, Hing IMDC criteria, he has a poor risk status that confers an overall survival of approximately eight months in the pre-immunotherapy era. For this reason, treatment is indicated. We do know that for select patients, active surveillance is an appropriate consideration based primarily on a data set published by Brian Reaney and colleagues in the Lancet Oncology a few years ago. In this study, it was clear that an initial period of active surveillance is appropriate for select patients and it does not appear to cause harm. I would point out, point out, however, that patients that are most appropriate for active surveillance are those with good risk status and a low metastatic burden. In the particular case that we've discussed, I do not think active surveillance is appropriate because he has a poor risk status, therefore a poorer prognosis and a high metastatic burden.